back to Great Battles of History, Alexander the Tyrant module, second to last battle, in this case the Battle of Tunis. Here, um, Agathocles has managed to actually create a little territory in Tunis which he's ruling, in addition to his Sicilian area. Uh, unfortunately he has to wander back to Sicily, and he leaves his son Gatharchus uh, behind, who gets himself into some trouble fighting against the Carthaginians, loses two out of three of his columns against an equally split up uh, Carthaginian force, and Carthage throws its army to siege uh, Tunis, the city. One I've never heard of, but the one that you named Tunisia. Yeah, I've heard of it. Okay. Uh, all right. Anyhow, <clears throat> here we have uh, a kind of interesting mixture of forces. They're very similar because the Tunisian uh, forces include, or Syracusian, however you want to look at it, include the, uh, a bunch of Libyan uh, recruits as well. Libya is sort of uh, the, the forces within Libya, Tunisia, whatever, uh, the, Car uh, the African forces are pretty much split between the two, two groups. So, for Carthage, you have something similar to their old uh, or to their, their, their normal forces. A little bit of uh, hop white center a mixture of skirmishers and chariots, and then a bunch of medium and light infantry, and then lights in the back, to support that with some calf in the wings. For the, uh, Syracuse, though, you have something a little dif different from usual. You again have their hoplite center, but you have barbarian infantry running about to here, then on the sides you have Indians who are standing in for uh, the Libyans, and they're the same value, so that's fine. And then a second line, less of these tribal units and less quality than what Carthage is able to manage, but you have some. They also have some cav, which is again mixed, uh, some light cav that's kind of lower quality than the African stuff that the Carthaginians are able to throw up in addition to the lower quality Syracusian cap. But you have higher quality chariots, and again, Indian chariots here, uh, which, are, or are they? Yeah, they're higher quality, uh, which could make something of a difference. They're hoplites about the same quality. Uh, so really, what you have in terms of differences is the barbarian infantry, which spans this space, facing somewhat lower quality Libyan infantry across here, and then the tribal uh, Libyan, inf uh, Lib Libyan mediums is here. So they have a larger number, but it's not quite as good as that barbarian stuff. Even, even the tribal veterans aren't, well, they're faster. So anyway, it's actually two remarkably similar armies facing each other, and it's going to come down to quality and leadership, leader value. Uh, a lot of space, so there's a fair amount of choice as to, hey, what do you want to do with your skirmishers? You got the room to, to s pull them out of the middle if you want. You got the room to try to uh, overwhelm. We have a little bit more skirmisher power, I think on Syracuse's side, it's hard to tell because these are spread out a little bit more because uh, their line's bigger. So, I don't know. Uh, definitely Carthage outnumbers. I think Syracuse has a little bit higher quality. I would put my money on Syracuse, but uh, we're not sure. <laughs> we're off to the races with the chariots and skirmishers just charging forward for the Carthaginian line. Um, I want to do that because I need to make room for the rest of the units. And I've kind of claimed half the battlefield now because 
these guys can't quite make it on an initial charge so if they move forward they may or may not get the opportunity to get first strike and do the maneuvering and cause problems to my structure of you know what I've got forward so a big advantage to having a low initiative guy when there's you know no um, no elite leader in play uh, who can just say okay we'll, we'll let this guy go first so I'm able to get the jump on the Syracuse team. By the way, I don't think I explained kind of the why of why I'm playing this. I'm currently in the midst of, and kind of want to get through um, a review of uh, Night of Man, but unfortunately I have the convention coming up. I really wanted to play something. I don't know what to do when my table's not set up, even though it's probably a dumb idea because I'm barely through my rules. I'm going to be playing La Grande Guerre at the convention, I hope. Uh, not getting a response from one guy and the other guy is kind of like, uh, I don't know, three players, I'd have to take a lot of, a, a, a big portion of, of the command. I was hoping for more people. I don't kind of like, well, but, you know, if you're doing Russia, it really doesn't get much simpler than that. I don't know how many people we could break it into. The only real question in three, the difference between three and four is one person is going to have to take Germany and Austria, uh, east and west front, uh, however you want it to divide that. Anyway, getting getting to this, uh, I'm pretty sure I'm not going to finish whatever I start. I know the next Night of Man scenario, I wouldn't be able to finish. I saw how long the first one took, and that's the simplest of them all. Um, this may be because I tend to play these a little bit more aggressively just in terms of coming in, you know, not needing as much time away because the decisions are sort of automatic for me in, in this. But also because for the same kind of reasons that I come in and play more, I'm also capable of, you know, during the con, if I manage to get home before bedtime or want to play a little bit in the morning before I head out, although neither of those seems likely for most days, I can do this. You know, <laughs> this is a game that I can do in a way that there's just no way that I'd be able to do, say, a whole turn of Night of Man. I don't have to do a turn of either, but with this, I definitely don't have to do a turn. Anyway, we fired off our first guy. We're on the fours now, which is going to put us over on the Syracuse side. By my count, I should have left the house uh, to go to the con uh, about a half hour ago or so. But I'm waiting for a poop to descend. So, yeah, you needed to know that. Trust me. Anyway, <laughs> I really hate having to go anywhere. It's, my life has gotten so simple where I almost never have to leave the house. But now this next week, I'm going to be leaving at a regular time. Now today, I can fudge it quite a bit, but... Uh, anyway. Um, the... Uh, <coughs> uh, situation has mostly developed for the approach. You can see forces kind of, you know, advancing, nothing too shocking anywhere. This guy, I guess, failed a Trump. It's been a while since I, I played. But uh, Agathocles here is my last guy ready to move. And now I have to try to figure out, okay, is there anything I can do with my skirmishers, chariots, and whatnot? And some of these are kind of wrong. So like, again, misprints here, these Indian, this is a chariot unit, but it's got a picture of a horseman. And it looks like it has the right stats on it though. There's it, just a lot of counter screw ups in the version that I have. I um, hope that they fix those wherever they came from. I don't, I don't know where those particular ones came from. Um, all these Indian units, probably Alexander Base Edition, but whatever. Uh, GMT's gotten better about either. <clears throat> so, e either quality control to begin with, but much more so uh, repairing problems. This was an era, and really up until not long after I got into the ho back into the hobby, uh, an era where, yeah, there was probably a C3I magazine that, you know, produced 
the counter errata. Uh, it's kind of, I, I view it as a really positive note that C3i has actually split off from GMT Publishing completely because house organs as a means of delivering errata pieces is just not sufficient for me. You know, <laughs> it, it, it brings you back to the old 3W days. SPI did very little of this. I much prefer the model, which seems to be gone, that uh, the gamers had, which was, hey, every year, you know, you, you get the errata counters. You, you got one of our games, you get them for a few years, you know, <laughs> until whatever. They no longer do that. They also have a house organ that they go through with MMP, and it's like, you know, it means if there are problems, they don't come back. But there were a lot more difficulties here. Anyway, I've got a tough decision here. Everything I did so far was pretty easy. The only iffy thing was moving these cab up in range of the chariots. Remember, the chariots are pretty kick-ass in this uh, system. Uh, just because they have, uh, well, three morale is not terribly good. The, the SPQR ones have a two morale for the most part, which is just so hideous. But here we've got some fours, so... Um, We'll see what I can do. Unfortunately, I've got the skirmishers facing the chariots. I don't have, um, maybe fortunately, because it's not an asymmetrical setup. They're, they're facing each other, but whoever gets the first strike should have an advantage here. So I may want to spend um, some cohesion hits to launch some attacks here. I can do a line command with him. He's my overall commander. A hard decision, which I knew it was going to require me to look at the charts, the chariot versus chariot fighting, a little bit of chariot versus skirmisher fighting. Uh, I know the advantage goes to the person who swings first. The skirmishers don't have to actually engage in the chariots, etc. So I put off till the end of the con and then another half day of rest or so. Well, shopping and sleep. Um, the ch final decision for the turn of activating uh, this guy for the Skirmishers. I chose to do it. The skirmishers had all, and chariot line had already been moved, but it seemed worthwhile to try to get the first hit in. So that's what I did. We kind of smashed in. You can see there's one place where there's still a conflict in place. Otherwise, we kind of won over here, kind of got beat over here, although we did break through over there. The skirmishers just melt like butter. Um, there's not a lot of points here, but, uh, you know, leaving, leaving those things in the way and, and controlling them can be of some use. The only problem is when they're more, disadvantage, more of a disadvantage to your own units, but there's enough time for them to clear themselves out and fight an actual little skirmish out front. Uh, the con itself, very, very fatiguing. Um, started out with Le Grand Guerre and... You know, that would have lasted the whole thing and probably not finished, but uh, two of the people had never played before. There were only three of us, and it just, it ran really, really slowly. 1914's always really slow, anyway. And we couldn't get out of 14. I think we, uh, we played till Tuesday, and then on Wednesday, I... Uh, Anyway, we were going to bail on Tuesday night. I think it would have been neat to see a little bit, you know, through the summer, but that might have taken the rest of the con at the pace that we were going. So <laughs> I, I don't think it's the case because the uh, the interfaces would have been slow, but the uh, uh, the regular playthrough wouldn't have been. Anyway, then I got to do some open gaming, and I think actually that's how I want to do the con is. Not necessarily start a huge game and quit it halfway through, which is what I've done the last two times, but try to schedule something that is only going to go three days or so, and maybe with less setup uh, for the beginning of the con, because I don't want to miss that Friday, Saturday night when there's a lot of people around for open gaming. That's usually the best part of the con for me. In fact, I could just do the weekend, but it is kind of fun to get the bigger games out and to... I don't know, tax your emotional existence that much. I still don't really like the low initiative leaders always going first, except when you have an elite commander. That's always kind of troubled me. It's one of the things that Chip will maybe take some uh, edge off of. But anyway, 
And then these guys were able to advance. Didn't roll for a momentum. It was unlikely to happen. A fair chance of handing some kind of benefit and through the die roll of doom. Yeah, not a very good chance, but I don't know much I want to do. I'm at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine hexes, which means they can't quite strike me without doing a momentum. Uh, I'm really unlikely to get two momentums, so I probably don't want to move. The only thing I could do was try for, uh, well, no, I didn't call this a line command, so I can't try for a second line command. So really there was nothing I could do of any value on that side. Which pushed it over to the cow here. Now they're outnumbered. And I charged forward and did some uh, javelin throwing here. That puts him at a slight disadvantage. Well, it reduces some of his advantages a little bit. He's got these new Midians, I think, here. And they have such a higher tactical quality, the eight. And they're fast, so I've kind of pinned them down. They're not going to run around the flank. The only problem is... These charging heavies are going to slam into my heavies. I was hoping to break these. So when I got a momentum, the first round I just did the attack because I get the charge, which gives me a slight benefit, well, which ended up neutralizing the other guy's size advantage. And I got a good roll. The second uh, round, I threw the leader in to try to get that die roll bonus. And I came close to breaking him, but I rolled as bad as possible with a zero. And he's a couple points below having to make any kind of check at all. And of course, the quality of the Sacred Band and actually these Syracuse units as well is so high that neither one's going to break real easily on this first con, uh, first impact. But now I'm probably going to get my calves swept away. And, you know, what do I do? If I stand back and take the charge, I'm going to get swept away too. So this, this is a real weakness on the Syracuse line. And I... I didn't see a way of fixing it. This was a high, you know, this wasn't really a high risk option, but it was an unlikely success. However, it looked like the best chance of success out of everything in terms of protecting that side of the, the line. Uh, historically, does Syracuse lose this one? It's been a while since I played, but I expect them to. Just because of their cav weakness, that's going to roll up their flank. Now, I've got these lights I can try to protect with, but man, that's a that's a serious uh, differential over there. Two activations <coughs> is about the limit of my ability to remember anymore. So anyway, well, two sets of activations because there might be momentums, etc. But uh, this guy launched his chariots and actually cleared out a couple of enemy units. But one of his units died here against uh, one of the uh, Syracusean chariots. But it's beginning to clear up the problem down there. Uh, the second activation, I think, caused a failed trump roll. Um, I figured I could waste this guy if need be, so it wasn't too big a deal. Then we swung over here, unable to get a line command. He's starting to straggle his light infantry into place to try to protect uh, against what looks like it's going to be the eventual cav... Uh, victory on that side. I'm probably going to want to refuse this flank and kind of leave it anchored as I move other things forward. The problem, of course, with that is uh, there's a lot of distance here. If these guys were close together, I could leave them kind of staggered and be a little bit safer. But this is going to be hard to move forward as a formation if it's got a refused flank. Okay. And indeed, the counterattack for the cav was pretty devastating. Took out the other heavy cav. I got some chariot here too. This not resolved yet. The New Midians and the uh, whatever the light cab is actually from. It's more African stuff that uh, Syracuse or Agathocles has gotten on his side. This guy moved forward with his cab with the hopes of getting a double move so he can break the cab over there. It's, that is a risky move. But given that I'm going to lose that side of the battle, if I'm not able to win this side first, I've got to try to press this one. And, yeah, so. Uh, that failed. He's just stuck out there, which means he'll get hit first. It may not be too big a deal, but he does have a, his heavy calf flank exposed because of it. 
And that brought me to a problem. Oops, I screwed up. This guy's got a five number for initiative. This guy's got a four. He should have gone first. Okay, not too big a deal. Well, but this guy, and I forgot to move this guy entirely last time because he kind of blends in there. But he's got a problem. He's got no line command uh, strategy rating. Now, he's not an overall commander, so he can't just do it automatically, so he should have one. I look in the special rules for the scenario, and there's nothing about it. I don't know what to do. I'm probably going to give him a two or something like that, because that seems to be... I don't know. I got no idea. Because, like, this guy has a five... Now he's a better commander. No, no, he's about the same level. Yeah, I'll give him like a four. But, you know, I'm just making stuff up here because the counter doesn't have it. I don't know if it's supposed to or if it's a counter that's meant for a different scenario that wasn't supposed to. Let's see where he comes from. He comes from the Tyrant module. Hmm. Maybe there's some special rules in the module about leaders without a command, without a strategy rating. He just does not have line command eligibility. He does not have the value, that L here on the front, and that's a plausible situation in the Alexander series. He's not allowed to make line commands. I don't know quite what to do with him. He's probably intended to play around with these uh, skirmishers, so maybe I'll use them for that. He did a good job, forced a route of one of the chariots as he slipped in behind it. And now he's coming behind the Syracusian skirmishers and, you know, putting a little bit of, hey, maybe you should be moving forward and hack up that chariot. Of course, the chariot could withdraw, but it doesn't have a lot of quality. And if it's getting attacked from the flank, it's not, it's gonna take a cohesion hit no matter what, so and possibly a second one as it goes away, which would destroy it. So that's kind of going away. He also rallied some of this calf here. All right, end of the round. And we've got a little skirmisher battle up here, which is holding up the entire Carthaginian line, <coughs> unless I want to break it up. I could have kind of flushed around it, but I did, I did bust out one of the skirmishers that was in the way, but pretty much I got to wait for that to to go because I lined up directly behind the skirmisher to keep my lines cohesion uh, and well my fire ping didn't work to clear it out maybe the chariots will be able to get rid of it that'll still probably be a turn before I can move forward over there uh, the skirmishers can't just withdraw because the opposing skirmishers have the same value so they're just standing there they're not fighting they're just shooting at each other uh, over here, these aren't flipped over, but they moved. I moved uh, the formation forward, trying to put some weight on this flank. Because, as I said, I have a chance of winning the cav battle over here. If I don't win either of the cavalry battles, I'm probably in a lot in, in a world of hurt here. Also pulled up that rear line. This is all with the army commanders in both cases. And that's the end of this turn. I forgot to score a couple of points. Three more. Syracusian points gone. They're up to 22. It's a long way, you know, the battle hasn't really started, but it was just the skirmishers scored this many points, and you can see that's not, that's not a good thing to have start. Maybe I'd be better off without the skirmishers, right? Score, score the cheap points on the opponent's skirmishers. All right. Uh, the Carthaginian Cav clears things up over here. And they actually are starting to fight over here effectively. In an attempt to trump in over there as infantry is being brought into line. The chariot battle is done here with the uh, Syracusian skirmishers jumping on the back of some of the chariots and knocking them out. I found myself making uh, some errors, just being rusty after a couple of weeks of not playing this. <clears throat> um, in this case, I think I destroyed this guy instead of uh, a failed route uh, rally check or whatever. He's Cav, so he probably he might have run off the board anyway. I'm not going to worry about it. But uh, I've gotten so used to hey skirmishers and chariots, they just get popped off the board. But I forgot that regular units have a chance to route for a while, for whatever reason.
The Jinnian skirmishers that were here ended up firing and becoming missile low. And this was a terrible situation. Neither unit could possibly move. They can't engage each other. And they were sitting there as a roadblock, taunting one another. The only thing that I could do was really break my line and push forward. And in doing so, I ended up, uh, I'm not quite sure how these ended up breached anyway. This one slammed into something, but these probably should have been running into the units in front anyhow. Uh, but anyway, now we've got a disrupted line. These guys have to move full speed, which means I'm going to have to engage with half my line. That's fine, but uh, there is an opening and an opportunity perhaps for this line to move forward and try to crush in the center here. Cuse's calf tried to take advantage of a second leader throwing him into play ended up routing one of the units the cab fight that he threw that he threw him into didn't really work too well and now the main guy here hero or hero has to try to rally a couple of units on the other hand this was a dangerous enough situation that Carthage blew a trumping attempt they're actually out of leaders at this point I remembered to use this guy as a trump earlier, so uh, he's really not very useful for anything else unless he takes command of either the cav or the skirmishers, and the skirmishers are mainly wiped out. And at what amounts to the end of the turn, hey, I even moved my routed units. Um, yeah, why am I doing this? Okay. Uh, Syracuse disrupted their own little light infantry over on this flank in order to chase down one of them pesky char chariots. Over here, boom, hit a, in hard uh, in the center. They routed one of those. That's going to be gone in some big points. And a little disruption in the line, but one of the nice things, unless they want to throw a light infantry to try to get the flank attack and disrupt their own line and prevent themselves from uh, launching a full attack, um, Actually, no, that's just not available. I thought I was attacking this unit. No, this guy's flank is covered actually by that hoplite. So there's not really an opportunity to take advantage of his flank here. There is here if a unit wanted to go in there, but he might get ground down very quickly. So that flank may be somewhat protected. Uh, commanding leader. Agathocles not only launched that attack, but he came over and started fixing this line. You can see it's not completely this unit. It's facing kind of the wrong way, but yeah. And we had so many movement points and did some little rallying type actions, recovery, whatever. So we'll be moving into, I don't know, which turn? Three, four, somewhere in there. We started off over on this flank cav battle. Uh, the crappy leader actually charged forward, did a damage. I think he took out one of the heavies. I'm not sure if that's what happened here. He certainly routed this light. That may be all that happened. And uh, then things transferred to, I guess, the uh, leader here for Syracuse, who kind of ran the things back, routing this heavy. <clears throat> came to over here, this calf started undergoing some recovery type steps. Die roll of doom, brought it back here, and that launched this big attack chasing this light calf with the, uh, with the charging heavies there. And I positioned the leader so that he's in command of both of these if need be. I didn't want to do a rally check with that, say, so, well, 10% better chance or whatever with, uh, that other leader and I don't see him doing much. One thing I did do though was kind of fix this line a little bit, preparing for that outflank. So some nice things look like they're happening for Syracuse on that flank. <clears throat> they're facing lights. They have their own lights, but they kind of have uh, overlapped the line a little. Plus I have, if I can get my cav, you know, to win the battle, I have that possibly coming around the back. Whereas over here with the refused flank, this calf is having a, you know, I just have more troops, so this, this calf is having a hard time 
getting into position to be able to do the outflank. I don't know if it's strictly more troops. There is this line of crappy light infantry that Carthage has, but they're not using it as effectively. Now, of course, if this line cracks anywhere, it may be all over. It launches forward, taking this phalanx unit in the flank, drives it back. You can see they took some expenses in trying to get there, hitting other units. Got a momentum, and now this is sort of the perfect time to try to trump in, right? Except because I can try to fill these gaps and prevent this from all collapsing, except I have no reserve. This is the difference between the two sides. I've opted to extend my flanks in the hopes of collapsing the sides. Well, that means my middle is weak, and now these lights can come in and try to swarm, and that's what we're gonna do. Quite, I did make the trump opportunity, and it was successful. Did a little bit over here, moved here, tried to get it a command to move the line forward, smack back, that got trumped. This guy's going to be able to now hit first with the Carthaginian line. And a big hit all along the line. Got a little bit of a breakthrough here. You can't tell because of all the no missile markers. Everybody's, everybody on this end of the Syracusian line has javelins and pretty much everything. That's not a heavy for uh, Carthage does. Uh, not a lot of traction there, but we got a little bit of an edge. Maybe a little bit more damage, especially when you throw in the javelins. And now the next attack, whoever chooses to make it, comes back on the, hey, you're, you're static, you're not moving. So you have a potential for uh, a size differential shift if the sizes were not all equal, but all the units are pretty much equal. Although I did get a, Two to one on here, trimming a one to two over there, basically. Um, in the attempt to kind of widen this gap, make it a little bit quicker. But both these units almost broke, actually. and to make their saves. Uh, their hoplite special saves. So, if I had a, a follow-up, I could then launch some of these lights in to try to crack the hole. But, having been trumped, I have no chance of momentum. This kind of hitting across the board, uh, across a long line like that is one of the more fatiguing aspects of the game. I gotta go take a break because of it, but I wanted to just take a look at how, how hefty you know, the hit was. And the actual real difference to being the guy who launched first is you win the ties on route checks. And so now, When, when, when you're moving and when you're static you lose those ties so there's a slight edge to having hit first it's not usually enough to win a battle but sometimes it is and this is uh this is a pretty close run thing right now it seems like to that big trump bypass uh the turn ends with a little bit of plinking around the edges you got some crack through here where you know, it got knocked back rallied etc Nothing too exciting happening on either side. Just really some cleanup going on to try to organize the forces. <clears throat> and, well, I got some routes to take care of but other, and clean and flipping units, but that's about it for this turn. Points is this is really kind of developing slowly. 52 for Syracuse, 32 for Carthage. One thing that, I wouldn't have come back just for the points, but one thing that... Um, I realized that maybe I haven't ever fully appreciated before was that a good commander can actually spread his troops to the flanks a little better. It's an interesting facet because I don't pay, I ha, haven't paid as big a price for Syracuse as I thought I would with that uh, for that hull. Now I still can't plug it, and Carthage is going to slip in there eventually. But I got an extra, you know, a few activations or whatever the rest of this turn by trumping in, where it's allowing me to try to win the battle on other flanks. And it's not like that collapse in the center is going to doom things right away. It takes a while for that to build up, but that's where all the all the points are. And it, it looks kind of grim, especially given that I don't have the 
cav superiority on one of these flanks. So I'm not going to win over there. So this is about all I got left to try to win. And there's not a lot of points over there. I mean, in aggregate there are, but unless I can break most of that line, most of the, those five point lights, it's not going to, it's not going to end things quick. It's not going to end things. And it's not going to end things as quickly as these guys do because they drop their shields and their spears or pila or whatever and they go running. Jennings try to rally this cav, but this commander here launches his heavies against them and actually smashes both of them back. Meanwhile, he also sent one of the light cav, which is, uh, I think, kicking here. And a bunch of the light infantry into play, and they really are starting to rack up that line. See a couple of routed units, one was destroyed as well. And this is really how Syracuse has any chance. Is they've won one flank, they've won it completely. It wasn't refused or anything like here, so there's not really any defense in place, and it's just getting getting creamed. Carthage begins trickling troops in through that center. They weren't able to get the attack off. They didn't have enough movement points there. But that's okay. They're, they're sliding outside the zone of control. So they can just start funneling those around the rears of those hoplites. Or hit flank, but you know, might as well go for the better attack. And combine with another attack under their main commander. Um, but this guy did not get an, uh, a momentum check. This guy over here did get a momentum check. He moved some of his infantry up, did some rallying, which was pretty lousy, actually. And he's not a good leader, and I couldn't really afford this guy, I don't think. But then I noticed, wow, I can slip my cav. This light cav here came from back here somewhere. Behind the heavy, which was charging, that pins it in place for the infantry to move up. And I got a rear attack advantage against that and that may turn the tide here somewhat uh, we still have another heavy and light left but it was a cav battle that was completely won by the Carthaginians but that flank's beginning to come uh, uh, come into Syracusean hands at this point so if I can get a double envelope, envelope uh, that may make up for cracking for, for the center cracking and being weak. Our Baeus dude It's apparently some Libyan leader uh, sends the uh, light infantry, he does some rallying for our recovery moves first, but then he sends the light infantry, this medium comes into play, just routes the center of the infantry line here and he's also able to, uh, through a couple of activations, all three actually, to use the cav to break what remained up there, cavan infantry are running. So he's pretty much collapsed this flank. We still have another leader on that flank available now. Of course, Syracuse does too, but they no longer have capable units there for the most part. They, uh, the majority of what they had in the line has died. So it comes down to a, uh, who's gonna go first? Well, they're both four point leaders. So this guy might be able to or salvage the situation partially and prevent this from completely being a problem. We only lost one light cav, got popped. It was routing and got hit with some javelins. And using our four initiative guy to try to rally things, which is generally a bad idea, I moved him forward and charged with a couple of these infantry. Did a pretty good job, actually. Knocked out one of the heavy cav and a light infantry. Light infantry rallied up here, but this guy who went next did the rallies. He failed on that cav. Now the only way you can lose that cav is on a nine, unless it runs off the map, which you know that speed it could do. <coughs> but yeah, it's a fairly safe unit to try to rally. Well, obviously I failed since it's in the dead pile and not on the board anymore. Which brings the points to 69 to 50. We're still seeing you know, there's a lot of battle left to, to complete here. This is, uh, this one's taken quite a while, but uh, we're about halfway to the points, and, you know, 
those flanks are collapsing and those points start changing. But this is turning out to be kind of a wild little battle here, this, this part of it. While the center is being kind of ignored because Syracuse really doesn't want to engage in the center, Carthage should because that's where they're going to get their points, but they got to engage with these guys. Breakthrough begins and we've pounded our way in. You can see widened that gap quite a bit. Two more hoplite units went. That brings it up to 95 to 50. Agathocles trumps in. He's going to launch attacks all along the line. This is sort of a Hail Mary here. If it goes really, really well, hey, maybe I, I have a shot. And he's rallying his units to prevent him from leaving the board. Got to resolve those combats. It's quite possible that it, things could go the other way. At 95 points, he only needs 20 to to lose. Of course, he doesn't really have 20 at risk here. This is 14 if this goes. And these guys will all just be running. So it's not going to be over right away, but one way or another, it could be pretty close. It looked like there was a lot of battle left, but boom, those phalanx units, when they go, they bring your morale down so fast. For most of the line where the light units were, Agathocles is tactic worked fine. He broke up as many at least of the Carthaginian units as he took hits on himself. He could run up and down and rally his units. The problem is he also had to include um, a phalanx unit in order to be able to get fair odds on everything and that phalanx unit ended up routing. And you can see that's 14 more points. I pulled uh, one of my infantry bought it too. Not that one. Actually, no, it was a light cav I think I was rallying. Anyway, that put me to 19 points. So that's actually here. I think I counted this 100. Oh, there's the infantry. I counted this 100. Here's the other 14. So that's going to be 114 points um, for the turn. That's one point less than I need to route. Now, conceivably, Syracuse could still win this battle, however, uh, I don't think there's any reasonable chance of that happening. This is end of turn. We're going to remove a lot of markers. I'll finish it off. I'll, I'll, I'll do the next turn. Ooh. Yeah. Those guys are routing off board because they didn't get to rally. But I don't think there's anything that's going to route off board here for Syracuse. So we're not going to see anything, you know, ending the game right here. And Carthage will get a few more points against them, I'm sure, but it's almost assured that with this situation, they're going to be able to continue scoring points against the Syracusine line. Well, it'll keep going because, well, I don't know. <laughs> because I always play things out to completion, but I don't always. It's just, I don't know, these battles. It's fun to watch the lines collapse further bit of maybe cleverness what happened here. First of all, this guy went around and uh, destroyed all his routed units. He rallied this one, but uh, that gave the next action over here. He started recovering units, preparing for a big attack, got a momentum, but Carthage decided to trump it with their big guy, which does a couple of things. First of all, they succeeded, which was the big thing because this is what Syracuse kind of needs to do, is get a big swing on this turn by, say, just overrunning um, these light infantry and scoring some big points. That's going to be hard, because you kind of have to pin them from both sides, and I don't know if that was even possible. But that was their intention. They wanted to recover their units the best so that they could do multiple attacks and such. But by trumping in, I've overrun some of my own leaders, but more importantly, it's not going to be a big turn because I took out a couple of the, uh, these guys no longer have the ability to get a momentum, so they're not going to get many activities, which is really what Syracuse needs here. And of course, there's nothing they could do to protect themselves against that, except hope for, you know, bad die rolls from the Carthaginian point of view. But now we'll see what can be done over here. And we may not finish this turn, we'll see. After a breakthrough routing one of these, and that's enough points to end this, but we'll keep going a little bit further, see see what's going on, maybe finish it, we'll see. Uh, 
um, successful momentum check which is kind of important because he rallied some of his units and one of his plans was or recovered some of his units was improving this and then improving this so that he could slam into this and kind of try to prevent something terrible happening to this unit because that's a 16 pointer and the less uh, Syracusean units that can hit the sacred band there the better off I am really I got most of them pinned here, but there's a couple of heavies here that can do a real number on it from the flank. And we're, that's what we're most worried about at this point. But Syracuse was able to trump in with a five point unit, which is important because I need those extra activations. Uh, I didn't want to go with the six pointer because that would cut my momentums on those guys as well. Unfortunately, there isn't a whole hell of a lot I can do. I've got these units that I can try to slam forward with. That's three activations. A fourth to move him forward. Maybe in a position where he can command some of these if he gets a, um, a momentum. And then I guess I don't even know if I want to rally because I won't be able to use the unit if I rally it. I've got to break Carthage on this round. So maybe try to keep a point. Maybe there's somebody here that I can uh, recover with. I think we're at the end here because this force moved forward, slammed in, routed a few of the units that it was, well, two of the units it was facing. Here we had a javelin throw that routed this unit. But the problem is I didn't get my momentum. And this is the one place where I could have scored some points. What that means is, yeah, you know, maybe I'll be able to trigger some points over here, but it's unlikely that there's anything of value there. And this is going over at 12. I, I think I'm one short. So I don't see much reason to continue and fight out what's really kind of a mess here when the whole army is just going to break at the end of this. I, I just don't see anything much that Syracuse can do. The only place where they could have gotten kind of the kind of uh, surround units was, hey, I got this, and then I bring these around the back, and maybe I can actually destroy some of these units and score some points. Because I'm not going to get much here. This is worth maybe six, this is worth 16 points if I can kill it. That's really the only thing that's within range. Uh, that puts me at 94. Anything else I'm going to hit probably is just going to route and stay on the board which means it's not going to score anything. I was talking to uh, someone about this recently, where they were very unhappy about this. They, you know, they wanted the men of iron type uh, of answer, which is, hey, if units are disorganized, routed, whatever, if they're in that bad state, they should count against your army morale. You know, uh, I think it was Joshua, actually, at the con, um, where a bunch of, you know, he had a bunch of Persians running or something. Uh, I don't remember which side it was, but there were a bunch of units that were routed, but not eliminated yet. And he felt like that army should be penalized for that. That's an easy fix to make. Uh, the only problem with it is it's a painful one to assess mid-turn. Uh, but, you know when it matters how big the map is in terms of whether or not you can route off of it or you know how close you are to breaking the enemy hey i don't want to rally units because that might end up breaking me or whatever <laughs> those kind of decisions seem really ridiculous in this system and it might make sense to you know if you're within a certain range of breaking start counting those units it's not part of the rules, but I think it might actually work well. By the way, this guy uh, took the old uh, Berg Chancellorville for the map. Uh, his, I think, Thunder at the Crossroads counters uh, with a few modifications for strength or whatever, and tried playing Chancellorville out using the CWB series there at the con. That, that was an interesting thing to watch because Chancellorville is one of the battles that never got covered really in CWB and that's a shame um, there's a, a few a few uh, battles that I'd really like to see covered with CWB that never quite got it and honestly I'd also like to see 
some of the bigger, some of the smaller battles be given more space. <laughs> Which is, you know, like seven days was so awesome. This is just me random babbling. Huh? But anyway, we're getting close to the end of the tyrant. Uh, as soon as we've got one more to go. However, I may be putting him on hiatus because I have two reviews due. Although one, I'm supposed to get a printout of the rules from the designer. And... You know, the, one of them is the Night of Men, Man that I've been doing. Um, and also, there's something else I really want to show. Uh, which we'll take a look at it. All right.